Hello everyone, we all know about gravity. Einstein explained it to us a century ago in his general theory of relativity. But as I explained in my last video, general relativity cannot be all that there is to gravity. We know that it breaks down its singularities and it doesn't take into account quantum effects. Therefore, it couldn't be a complete theory. And this is why so many people are working on theories of quantum gravity. But can it be the case that the reason it is so hard to quantize gravity is because it isn't supposed to be quantized? What if gravity isn't fundamental and only emerges as a result of some other underlying quantum process? What if gravity is emergent? And there comes the idea of emergent gravity. Emergence is a really cool idea. What is the heart of it is that a system can have properties that its individual parts don't. We know about the different states of matter, solid, liquid or gas. However, there is nothing solid in individual particles or liquid or gaseous. These are emergent properties. They emerge from the collective behavior of many particles. It is a macroscopic observable emergent from a more fundamental microscopic behavior. Another really cool example comes from thermodynamics. Suppose there is a room filled with air. It has properties such as density, temperature and pressure. However, if you think about an individual molecule of air, it doesn't have these properties. Instead, it has velocity, momentum and position. It's just that when you take a large number of these molecules, the averages give you features reminiscent of density, temperature and pressure. The cool thing about this is that both of these ways of looking at air is completely fine. The fluid picture of air with macroscopic properties, density, temperature, pressure works really really well even though it's not the most fundamental way to explain air. Similarly, in the kinetic theory, air is viewed in terms of being composed of tiny little particles, each with its own different position and velocities. And if you know the position and velocities of all of those particles making up that air, you know almost everything that you could about air. The problem is that it is not that easy to compute and know the portion velocities of all of those particles. In such a situation, the microscopic view is a fine-grained version of a simplified coarse-grained macroscopic view. And if you still couldn't appreciate how interesting emergence really is, this is a quote from Sean Carroll's book, The Big Picture. Organisms can be alive even if their constituent atoms are not. Animals can be conscious even if their cells are not. People can make choices even if the very concept of choice doesn't apply to the pieces of which they are made. Emergence Therefore, if there are some quantum processes that in certain circumstances can give rise to an effect similar to gravity, we can say that gravity is emergent. And this is what we think can be true. We think that space-time might itself not be fundamental and might emerge from an underlying quantum process, which I'll tell you exactly how further in the video. But first, let's talk about black holes. Black holes are fascinating things. These are objects formed after the collapse of the most massive stars in the universe. And as everybody knows, nothing can escape a black hole, not even light. There is this boundary surrounding the black hole called the event horizon and it is this point of no return. Nothing can escape this boundary. During the 1970s, a lot of research was going on black holes, especially their relation with thermodynamics. This is when Jacob Bekenstein showed that black holes must have entropy and whenever anything falls into a black hole, the entropy of the black hole must increase. And if you look at the formula for the entropy of a black hole, you'll see that it is directly proportional to the area of the event horizon, which is weird because entropy in some sense is the measure of information and if it can be described in terms of just the area of the event horizon, that hints at the possibility that all of the information of the black hole is in some sense encoded in its event horizon. Think about it. The information of the entire volume of space inside the black hole is in some sense encoded in just a two-dimensional surface of the black hole, its event horizon. Like a hologram. In a hologram, as we have seen in movies, the 3D image is encoded in a 2D plane. Holograms. This is where the holographic principle has its origin and the idea that the universe might be a hologram kind of thing. During the 1990s, Gerald de Hooft and Leonard Susskind used these ideas from black hole physics and came up with the holographic principle. The idea that the 3D world we live in can be a hologram projected from a 2D surface infinitely far away. Holographic universe. Even though a holographic universe is possible, 
we don't really have any evidence that our universe is a hologram. However, we have some evidence that some universes can actually be kind of like holograms. It all started in 1997 when Juan Meldesina came up with the ADS CFT correspondence. I know this sounds horrible, but hear me out. Here, ADS refers to anti distant space. It is a toy universe, but not like our universe. Rather, in some sense, it is quite the opposite. It has a negative cosmological constant and some other quirky features which allows it to have a boundary infinitely far away. What the ADS CFT correspondence says is that the boundary and the bulk space of this anti distant space are dual to each other, which means the physics playing out on its volume can be described equally well with the physics playing out on its boundary. The volume of the ADS space can be described by physics on its boundary, on just its boundary. A particular state on its boundary corresponds to a particular state on its volume. And this is where holography kicks in. Since the boundary has one dimension less than the bulk space, it is like a hologram. Now, all of this becomes even more interesting from the realization that the volume of the anti density space can be described by string theory, which has gravity, but the boundary of the anti density space looks pretty much like flat Minkowskian space, which means space time without gravity, and therefore it can be described by a kind of quantum field theory called conformal field theory, CFT, which importantly does not include gravity. And since the volume and the boundary are dual to each other, you get to a condition where Gravity in a universe can be described by physics that does not actually include gravity in it. It will be as if gravity isn't fundamental and only emerges as a result of some other underlying quantum process. It is then possible that only the 2D boundary is real and the 3D AD space is just what it looks to us even though all that there is is a three-dimensional space-time in which a kind of quantum field theory works just fine. And we have some hints as to quantum entanglement might be that underlying quantum process that could be behind gravity. It's been suggested that the entanglement in the CFT boundary has a direct effect on the geometry of the anti density space. And since the geometry of space-time is gravity, entanglement might be the thing causing it. It's also been found that space-time without entanglement cannot hold itself together. That entanglement is the thing holding them together. These ideas are very elementary and hypothetical. But well, this is how we mean space-time can emerge from entanglement and can cause gravity. However, we should be cautioned as ADS CFD correspondence does not apply to our universe as our universe is not an anti decid space. Plus, this correspondence is not proven as well. Like, there are evidence that it is correct, but it is not proven. Now, we can go into two different directions from here. First, we can deny all of this. If all we are doing in a hypothetical, weird and purely mathematical universe, is there any point of taking it seriously? Shouldn't all of this be classified as mathematical fascination that has very little to do with the real world? Or second, we can accept that. Yes, it is all purely hypothetical ideas at this point, but these have given us important insights into the developments of other quantum gravity research and even black hole physics as well. And we don't really know what the true nature of gravity and space-time really is. And personally, I would be pretty surprised if a simple straightforward idea did turn out to be the way gravity most fundamentally works. But the link of gravity and entanglement might be the way to go looking for it because there are people who are working on using entanglement to obtain space time in our normal universe as well. To add, I certainly haven't covered the topic completely and there are all sorts of details that you might want to know about. If yes, there are sources that I've linked down in the description that you might want to refer to. At last, in the beginning of the video, I told you that general relativity isn't completely correct. So if you want to know exactly why we think that and what are some of the biggest hurdles to quantum gravity, you can check out my last video for that right here. And thanks for watching and this is finally it. Bye.